So there was first this tweet, right, from Josh Pate. And it's the ACC with the water kind of, you know, some ripples there. Some action, some rumblings, if you will. Rumblings going on with the water cup and the ACC. And then someone immediately responds, expand. And Josh Pate says, the league is about to do the opposite of that. League is about to do the opposite of expanding. Uh, now, none of this is is groundbreaking, right? Absolutely none of this is groundbreaking. We, we know that most people think the ACC is going to do the opposite of expand because of everything happening with Florida State and Clemson. They'll be gone. North Carolina, probably gone. Two, three, four others, probably gone. And then what happens from there? Can they backfill? Do they turn into a minor Ivy League type of conference? Do a bunch of teams leave for the Big 12? We don't really know. But everybody expects that to be the real outcome there. It's just that when Josh Pate throws something out there, you got to think like something must have happened. Something legitimately, legitimately must have happened because Pate is a respected guy. Like I will even say he earned a, not that I was doubting his credibility, but he earned even more credibility with me recently when the big 12 did have this story with private equity and the naming rights come out because I had literally heard him say like a week before that, Hey man, don't let Brett Yormark. He he teased it. He teased it. He dropped. I'm going to mess up my par- paraphrasing here of what he had said, but he teased that Brett Yormark had something up his sleeve. And then lo and behold, within like two weeks, here comes the story that drops about the Big 12 and private equity and the Big 12 and naming rights. So Josh Pate definitely is is very well informed. You can even just tell by all the coaches he has access to to go on his tours and talk to people like how well respected he is around the college football world. It's a guy that definitely is going to have people talking to him. So when he throws out something like that, your ears definitely perk up. And I start to listen here and wonder, all right, like what's coming, what's happening here. Now I saw one of you very early on in the chat said, ah, Josh Pate was talking about the big 10 in Notre Dame. I don't, I mean, I guess maybe so, but it literally said ACC. So I I guess I would think if it's going to be about the big 10 and Notre Dame, the headline on it would not be ACC, right? Even if that would mean somehow ripple effects with the ACC, um, the headline there is going to be, Hey, the biggest prize in conference realignment, maybe moving somewhere. So I'm going to take him at face value here that that would be about the ACC. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like anyone's really been able to figure out what what is going on there. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Like, I wouldn't pretend to tell you that I have inside information about what's going on there. But it it is another very strong voice. To me, one of the stronger voices in college football right now, pushing forward that, hey, the ACC is in some real trouble here, man. And as these cases continue to evolve, we'll see how soon Florida State and Clemson are going to get out. But they're going to get out. And I, I feel like... Right now, ACC fans are in a pretty comparable spot to where Big 12 fans were. And and when I say Big 12 fans, I mean Hateful Eight fans. Those of us in the Hateful Eight, remember those days, back in July, August of 2021. Very similar spot where at that point, everybody had left. You for dead on the side of the road. Everybody thought you were done. Everybody thought the league was over. Nobody has officially left. Nobody has officially left the ACC right now. But it's like a long, slow drag out to that point, and everybody knows it is going to happen. So the only real difference there is like Texas and Oklahoma like made it pretty quick once that story got out there because of Texas A&M complaining. They just got that part over with pretty quick, and they were gone. Now it's just, hey, everybody, everybody knows that this is going to happen. So I've seen ACC fans like a little bit more in the comments and just some of the reactions watching on Twitter. It just feels like those fan bases are getting a little bit more uppity and defensive. Uppity is probably the wrong word there in this, but just more defensive, uh, more frustrated, more angry, responding to more comments, you know, from other people like hey, trying to 
generate more respect in their league and say, no, we're actually, we're going to be the ones that will pick off schools from the big 12 uh, still using like the Utah rumor that we had not that long ago about Utah and the ACC that was pretty quickly debunked when Utah came out with its own statement. I'm just seeing more consternation from those fans. And I just want to say like, I, I get it, man. I get it. Like, I, I know that I have not always been the kindest to just the ACC's brand of football because I have found it pretty mundane and boring. I just haven't paid a lot of attention to the ACC outside of Florida State and Clemson. They are typically pretty entertaining, but I mean, I don't Miami, North Carolina, I don't boy, I don't Pitt, Wake Forest, West Virginia. And they've look, they've had some good teams. It just has not done a lot for me. But I do have to say, man, I I am very I'm very empathetic to their plight right now and where they're at, because you do have people from all corners of the college football world, stuff like this happening nearly every day, right? Like Josh Pate coming in here and just dropping a palm on everyone. Like, Oh boy, not looking great for the ACC right now. And you don't feel very good about your future. Hateful eight fans have been there. Washington state and Oregon state fans have been there. Hateful eight fans survived by the skin of their teeth. Washington state and Oregon state fans, not so lucky. So if you are one of those fan bases right now, I get it. I understand why you would be in this position. I just I want to say that because I get accused of the ACC hate a lot. I'm I'm really just here to give you my opinion on everything, and I have not been someone that's watched a ton of ACC football because to me the product has been a little milk toast. And I, people in ACC country would say the same thing about Big Twelve football. I'm sure. I'm sure they would come right back at me with that, and it's why. When Texas and Oklahoma initially left, Stuart Mandel was saying, well, the Big 12 TV product is going to be worth like $8 million per school per year with these these teams that are left, right? I mean, a lot of people held the same opinion about the Big 12. So I just want to point that out. ACC fans, I'm just I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic to your cause. I'm empathetic to your cause right now. I don't think it's going to turn out very well for you. Uh, I still don't although I am opening a little bit to perhaps a possibility that there's just a backfill scenario here where some form of the conference does kind of survive and you're sort of like the Big 12. Maybe something like that could happen. I don't want you to wind up like Oregon State and Washington State. It'd be nice if a landing spot for some of your schools was in the Big 12. That would be nice, but I don't want I don't want those fan bases to get left out in the cold like Oregon State and Washington State. Truly don't. It would be hypocritical of me to say that I do hope that happens. All right. Now, if you were somebody that in July of 2021 was laughing at the hateful eight, then, you know, maybe, maybe we'll start to have a different conversation, but in general, in general, I don't. So when these types of things are happening from the Josh Pates of the world, I I get why that sucks. And I get why that has to be very, very frustrating right now. Uh, Speaking of Josh Pate, he did have quite the take, man. Somebody, I think, had had suggested this to him, like left this to him as a question or comment. He expanded upon it, and I thought, dude, I mean, this is this is so true. This is so true. Um, the general theory was he was talking about how many SEC teams are going to get into the college football playoff this year, and there was a wide range. You know, I feel like the discussion was three all the way even up to like six, and the theory was, Hey, one of two things will happen. Either the sec is going to get like five teams in take up damn near half the field or half the field. And everyone will be unhappy with that and saying like, you know, what, what are we doing with this? This sucks. Like we got rid of the auto bids here. Haven't, you know, we killed the thing where the sec was going to get like four bids automatically, but now we still, the committee is going to bend over and do this. Like what? That sucks. That's one scenario. Or the other scenario is the SEC gets like three teams in. They feel like they deserve a couple more and they don't get those teams in. The committee does not put them in. And then we'll be right back to the SEC and Big Ten throwing a fit and saying, we'll just take our ball and go home. They hold that power. And the harsh reality is, I mean, I hadn't thought about it in quite that direct of terms, the harsh reality is like they do, they've got the sport by the throat. Like, what are you going to do? If the committee does not let enough SEC or big 10 teams in, they can throw the same fit that Florida state threw. They'll just have a better recourse. 
because they can say, we'll just go form our own playoff. Whereas Florida state said like, well, fine, we'll leave the ACC and go to a conference that respects us. But now we got to be embroiled in these lawsuits and it's going to take a while and it's going to take nine figures worth of money to actually do this. So a little bit different there. They can, they can go with the same type of Florida state campaign, but they've got legitimate, legitimate bargaining power, legitimate leverage uh, there to do that. So, I did want to point that out. I was like, you know, that's actually, that's, that's pretty clever and, and pretty, pretty damn true. Um, the SEC and big 10 can do that. It's, you know, we'll complain about that. We'll point out how ridiculous it is that the sports in that position, not everybody totally will. Pate was kind of like, Hey, is that right? Is that fair? No. Is that reality? Yes. And that's, that's 1000% true. You know, here on this channel, we'll call it out as like, that's BS. It's not good for the sport. It's not good for anybody. But huh. on, uh, honestly, though, I think the more likely scenario is that the SEC would get five teams in. I, I have a hard time seeing the committee really bowing down to the Big 12 or the ACC or something at that point. I think the, the much better chance that the SEC just gets what they want and uh, and gets gets all those teams in.